one question I have in relation to all of this is, how do you see race ideology or the discourse focused around race precluding people in certain ways from seeing what we have in common, from seeing the humanity that we share, from leading with love and compassion in some ways, um, if you see race ideology hindering people at all. Because I think the fir my first introduction to you was um, the piece that you wrote on stop calling me white for having the wrong ideas. Mm. <laughs> so I, I welcome an opportunity to hear more about how you think about race ideology or your own experiences and um, you know what you're imagining for the future. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the major problem is that we're engaging in this project of unification. That is what we are ostensibly doing, or at least trying to do, uh, is this project of unification. Now, there are, there are many interpretations of what unification means, and there are differing kind of levels of uh, optimism as to whether it's even possible. But I think that the entire endeavor is kind of dead on arrival because we're not recognizing the divisions that are baked in right from the start so the, just from the language we're using right we're thinking white people black people brown people yellow people that's already um, a victory for the for a division that's already a, a a failure on our part right so we, we've already kind of just given the game away from the beginning and the harder we try we're trying and trying and you know, grinding our head against this thing and pushing and pushing and pushing with with all the best intentions in the world. But we're, we're not recognizing it's kind of like, I don't know if we talked about this before, but it's kind of like that meme of the kid with the with the boot on his face. And then the meme zooms out and you realize he's got his own hand in the boot and he's the one pressing it on his own face. That's kind of what we're doing um, with this whole thing by by accepting the concepts of race and and speaking as if it's real and engaging with one another as if it's real you know walking down the street and seeing a person who's racialized as white and thinking that person is nothing like me that person is different they're from a different you know they're from a different uh group they're from this this alien kind of community and i'm from a, i'm from this community they're from this community we are fundamentally divided from one another based on this concept, that's nonsense. When for, for all you know, that person could be your best friend in the world if you just got to know them. You might have 99% of all your characteristics in common, right? You love all the same food, you love all the same music and movies, you have the same taste in partners, you have, you know, you, you shop in the same places, you have the same aesthetic kind of style. There's so much that you could have in common, but you've created this chasm between you based on this concept. That's what everyone's walking around doing and thinking without recognizing that they're doing and thinking it, you know? So, so many of us pay lip service to the, the you know, race is a social construct, but, but we just kind of say that and then continue to behave as if it's real. So it's kind of like, you know, everyone is, uh, it's kind of like imagine an, an actor in the middle of a scene during a movie saying this is just a movie and then going right back into the script and saying their lines and pretending the world that they're playing in is real um you know that i mean i guess it's good to stop and say this is just a movie like nobody's actually dying here but if you keep shooting the movie if you keep acting you're not really stopping the movie like the movie is just going to keep going and eventually people are going to forget that it's a movie and it's it's just going to be the reality that they're in. Um, so that's that's the, the biggest issue, I think, is just that fact of race has become the thing we're swimming in. It's the air we breathe. It's it's how we see and how we speak. You know, um, you and I are black or brown, and that's just a, a thing that people say. That's just the thing that's accepted. It's it's the it's the axiom upon which we build everything, right? We, we build all our arguments and all our rhetoric and all our, our thinking and policy. Everything is based on these things that are 
flawed from the start. So we kind of, we're kind of fucking ourselves just from the, from the beginning, you know? Um, yeah, that's my main thought there. I don't know if I answered your question, but. Yes, you did. You did. Um, what do you mean? So you've said at least three times, not that I was counting, but you said, <laughs> you said at least three times, something to the effect of race is nonsense. That I, mm. The concept of race is nonsense. Cool. So uh, you know where I stand philosophically. So sure. you know that I would agree, but yeah. for uh, other folks who are just being introduced to, to you and your ideas, can you mm. tell me what you mean when you say that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, so race is a, a a way of categorizing human beings into different subgroups that was created fairly recently. Um, I you know I think I can't even remember exactly when, but it's very very recent history, right? So there was slavery before and there was prejudice before, but it wasn't it wasn't really based on race. It was based on ethnicity. Oh, you're from that tribe, or you're from you know that you're from that city state or you're from that country, right? And there was bigotry that way. But um, the invention of, you know, these are black people, these are white people, these are red people and yellow people, that, that's a fairly recent invention. And it was used to justify chattel slavery in America. And uh, correct me if any of this is wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've got this. Um, and it's completely arbitrary. It's, it's, it's something that, to the extent that it that it um, grafts onto, you know, um, geographic or genetic population populations, which you know there is population variation in humans. There's genetic variation in humans. There there are groupings you can subdivide, but to the extent that that the concept of race grafts onto that, it does so by accident almost it's coincidental and it's extremely sloppy especially at the margins so you know someone like me both my parents are from the dominican republic uh my entire life it's basically been like wait so is is angel black or is he brown or like what what is angel because he's not black black right <laughs> so it's like well i'm not black black i'm am i brown or am i you know and i kind of grew up thinking i guess i'm brown because i'm i'm obviously not I'm obviously not black, like, you know, Michael Jordan is black, right? But my mom is extremely fair skinned. So how does that work? And, you know, I have I have family members who, you know, have cousins who look straight up, they look Chinese, you know, like, they have the same kind of complexion, their eyes look very similar. So it's a whole mess. And I've always been kind of outside of it. And it didn't quite fit in neatly. And I think I think you notice a trend of people who are, you know, quote unquote, biracial or people who are of these kind of communities where things are really, really mixed up and it's very unclear. It's not so binary. They're the ones who tend to kind of, you know, take the red pill and suddenly they recognize the matrix, you know? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm one of those, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think that it's a, it's a nonsense concept, but it was, it was, infused into the structure of our society right and it was it was used to justify heinous and horrible things um and you know you and i talked about it before but it's to think about it i mean i we all understand why it happened and why it happened the way it happened but to think about it kind of if you just analogize it you can recognize how weird it is because basically what happened is you know there were there were witch hunts and there were witch trials and then, you know, there are a bunch of people saying, oh, you're a witch, you're a witch, we're going to burn you, you're a witch. And then the people who were being accused of being witches started telling their kids, listen, you're a witch, you have to hide from the people who are hunting witches. And, you know, as a witch, you have to behave this way in the world, this is the way you have to see the world, because witches, we're always, we're always in danger, we're always being hunted. And then that, that person grows up and tells their kid, listen, as a witch, you have to do this. You have to, this is how you have to understand the world and live in it. And then you get witch pride and then you get witch rights. And then you get, you know, all this, all this stuff. Right. And it's, again, I understand why it happened the way it did, but it's very strange that everyone just kind of stepped over that first bit of there's no such thing as witches. That's, that's crazy. Why are we calling ourselves witches? Why, why did we just internalize this? this concept to begin with. Um, so, so 
you know, again, it, it's obviously more complicated than that. And there's a lot going on there. But at least for that little concept, I had an aha moment reading Racecraft by Barbara and Karen Fields. Um, you know, it was a slow kind of progression. I was getting there anyway, you know, Thomas Chatterton Williams's book, and plenty of people have spoken about this sort of thing before. And my own kind of just position as uh, a kind of ambiguous identity, it was very difficult for people to put me in one little box um, for many reasons. But yeah, after reading Racecraft, I was just like, oh man, I'm, I am done with this. I'm militantly anti-race now. And I'm going to do whatever I can to divorce myself from this concept and to elucidate it to everyone else. Yes, and when I hear you say that, what I hear is I'm anti-race because I'm anti-racism. And I see the way in which racism created the thing called race often yes. masquerades itself as race. So that when you talk about anti or uh, race or abolishing the idea of race, you're not suggesting that who people are gets erased, right? No, not at all. And, and something else that, that I thought of earlier too was when you were describing, um, when you were describing, I can't remember if it was in direct relation to race or if it was a different concept, but you were talking about how ideas such as race actually work to keep people divided from themselves and from other people. 